All right, students, ladies and gents, I'm here with a very special guest, someone who's actually become a friend of mine over the years through the wonderful St. Baldrick's Foundation. So, Miss Liz, thanks so much for being here and for taking a few minutes of your day to tell us a little bit about your career in that. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me, Phil. I'm really excited to be here and speak with all of your students and anybody watching. But yeah, like Phil said, my name's Liz. I'm a development manager at the St. Baldrick's Foundation. And the St. Baldrick's Foundation is a volunteer and donor powered charity and the largest non-government funder of childhood cancer research grants. And so we support research that can lead to cures for kids with cancer. And, um, you know, many people know St. Baldrick's, they think about, you know, head shaving, which um, you, many of you have probably, you know, seen Mr. Phil shave uh, multiple times and fundraise through that. So part of my role is I get to work with volunteers like Mr. Phil and try to encourage our volunteers to feel appreciated and stay involved with St. Baldrick's. So, um, you know, despite how large of an impact the foundation has made, um, you know, we're a fairly small staff of about 40, 40 members. So we can wear different hats at different times and it really allows us to learn more about different roles. But my role here is to support volunteers and build relationships so that they will to fulfill their personal ambitions for their involvement. So I oversee strategies for retention efforts, recruitment, recognition. So I help run different campaigns like during National Volunteer Week, you'll see things on social media, um, people will receive emails. So I get to oversee all of that stuff. And then I get to write different fundraising emails. So I get to put my creativity and writing in, in to use. And I get to, you know, work with people who want to start Facebook fundraisers um, or want to start Instagram, you know, fundraising on Instagram through that donate button. So there's people actually behind the scenes um, at different organizations working on plans to get people to do that stuff. So that's kind of my role here. And uh, more recently, we're working on, you know, different virtual events and supporting our volunteers to ensure that virtual events can continue because, you know, in-person events have been affected. So yeah, that's pretty much my, my role here. It's, it's working with different volunteers and supporting them to make sure that they're fulfilling their personal ambitions of why they got involved. Yeah, and I think that's how I guess through your job, right? That's how we met. I shaved my head a couple of years and then you started emailing me and just saying, you know, hey, is there any way that we can support to help you raise more money, to get more people involved? And I think that's where our professional relationship grew from. So yeah. I totally see firsthand uh, yeah. for my students who might not understand that. Uh, could we kind of go through a typical day in Liz's life? Like, it sounds like you have a uh, never a dull job because you have a <laughs> lot of different things going on. But yeah. what does it look like for you? Is it, you know, emails? Is it computer phone calls? Like, just so we can kind of get uh, a headshot of what's going on in your every day to day kind of job. Yeah, of course. A lot of it is phone calls, emails. I get to call different people who I notice, you know, hey, this person raised $10,000, you know, let me call them, thank them and get to know them. You know, what, what can I help with? What can I support them with? And so, yeah, I think, you know, a typical day for me is running a report and seeing, um, you know, who might have reached a certain threshold so that I can recognize them. And then who, you know, is close to hitting that, their fundraising goal or who, you know, who hasn't hit their fundraising goal and how can I support them? So a typical day for me is, you know, getting a report, giving some phone calls, sending emails, um, helping create, making sure that the campaigns that we have, the projects that we have are on track and doing all we can to make sure that our volunteers are supported. So a typical day for me is basically emails, phone calls, and overseeing the different strategies that we have in place. Okay. Do you work with more by yourself or do you consider it like, are you working with a larger team? Just curious about that, the work that you do. Yeah, I work with the special events team. I work closely with them. So we recently merged. Um, I was part of another department, but we merged to, to be closer with the special events team. So a lot of volunteers are part of the special events that we have, but we also have non-head shaving events, which we work closely with too. So I work with volunteers who are part of the head shaving events mm -hmm. and any role that they have, you know, a shavee um, of 
volunteer or just a typical fundraiser. But most of the people who organize the events work directly with other staff members. So I get to work with those staff members to make sure that everybody's feeling supported and feeling recognized. Very cool. Very cool. So St. Baldrick's obviously is near and dear to my heart. And I know you fully believe in the mission in that. Was this always your game plan to get into the nonprofit world and be a part of something bigger than yourself? Is it something you fell into and you're glad you did? Could you kind of walk us through the pathway of, you know, your, your education experience into where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, after high school, I went to a four-year university here in California, Cal Poly Pomona, and I changed my major three times. So um, I ended up choosing sociology, which is really just the study of human behavior, social relationships, cultures. And I just want to note for um, the high school students watching, you know, I really blossomed into more of a people person after high school. So Mm -hmm. I played sports in high school, but I was really shy. And I got involved at Cal Poly Pomona. And so during my time there, we got to organize different activities and we got to do give backs to different causes, which is really when I was like, hey, this is fun. I like doing this. And so I applied to the University of Southern California and I ended up getting my master's degree in social work. And I just realized there's so much flexibility in that line of social work. Uh, I was able to have an emphasis on community organizing, planning and development. So a lot of times people think social work, you think mental health, you think direct, um, working directly with families. And, you know, in my role, I get to work indirectly in supporting families, you know, with kids fighting cancer. There's just so much flexibility in that. And um, St. Baldrick's was actually my first job out of grad school. Mm. And I was there for a year. I ended up leaving. (laughs) I wanted to explore other options in the field. And I decided, you know, I worked with the homeless population. I worked in the mental health field with students. And I decided, you know, I really want to go back into that world of giving. And so that's when I came back to the foundation. And yeah, I just, I've been here since. That's uh, incredible, Liz. I've never knew. You're right. When I think social work, I think individuals helping in an office, in a school, a family talk, but that social work can focus on community wide. So a bigger net, if you will. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's really cool. And and so with St. Baldrick's, you came back to it and how long have you been with St. Baldrick's now? I'm going on my fifth year, but if we count the other year, it'll a combined total of six years. (laughs) Well, that's no, that's remarkable. And thank you. Uh, Sociology and social work and helping others is already, you know, very admirable of you to be interested in, but then to be a part of St. Baldrick's, which helps so many families and and saves lives as well. uh, We want to thank you, you know, for being a part of that bigger picture and that bigger cause. With, With that being said, you mentioned like, there's a lot of hats, there's a lot of communication in that. If yeah. we were talking right now to our uh, my high school students and anyone else that might be listening, is there any lessons or skills or tips or things along the way that you just like to pass along that you would have benefited from maybe knowing younger or just things in your everyday job that you really feel allow you to do a great job in that any type of tips or learning experiences or a sponge we'd love to soak up from you? Yeah, I would say, you know, the biggest tip is to get involved. Um, whether that be in your community, virtually, however it is, just step out of your comfort zone, get, get to know the people around you. You know, I know I've learned so much from the people around me in my previous workplaces, but even volunteers like you, Phil, I've learned so much from just different people. And then the other thing I'd say is just to keep learning and don't settle. So if you go to college and find out that there's a major that just isn't right for you, keep looking, keep studying and and, you know, ask questions, you know, find what your passion is. So get involved. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And then don't be so hard on yourself. If you graduate with one degree and then you find out, hey, like, this isn't really what I want to do. Like, we're in the age where people change careers. Some people just don't stay at a, a job for 40 years like our parents did. And so I think it's okay to change it up. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, I, I know for me, I'm still learning and There's just so much in the world of giving, be it corporate social responsibility, if that perks your interest. And 
anything like that. There's just so much opportunity out there that I think a lot of us can really take advantage of. And, you know, I guess that would be my, my biggest tip for students. Yeah, no, thank you, Liz. I think that's great advice. And honestly, that is a common theme from the people we meet It is that life uh, is about flexibility and you end up from one experiencing opening a door and interest you never even knew about until you experienced it. So that idea of getting involved, uh, I really appreciate you saying we're lucky in our school to have like key club where they call it service learning, where you're doing extra activities, but through that, you really are, like you said, Liz, you're learning from other people, gaining experiences and learning more about yourself, what you thrive and enjoy. So that was wonderful um, advice. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real quick before we go, because I want to respect your time in that. And I really appreciate all you've mentioned so far. Is your team somewhere centrally located? Or are you finding that you guys are all over the country? Has, has that uh, been something you've noticed with the nonprofits maybe or with St. Baldrick specifically? With St. Baldrick specifically, most of us are located in California. We do have a few remote staff who are in other states, but most of us are located in the main hub um, here in Monrovia, Los Angeles, California. So I know with other nonprofits, um, I think it just depends, but I know for St. Baldrick's, yeah, most of us are, are local. Yeah, and uh, much better weather there than here right now currently. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we know what we sign up for when we're in Illinois as well. So Liz, we can't thank you enough. This has just been great to shed light on the, the nonprofit sector and honestly doing a job that positively impacts the world. So once again, on behalf of myself and my students and Sandberg family, we just want to thank you for all you do. It means a great deal to us. And we're proudly raising money and shaving again this March as a school and a district. So we will be supporting you and all of uh, your friends in the uh, California area as well. And hopefully we can find more and more cures and support more people. Yeah, thank you so much, Phil. And thank you to all the students and everybody involved. Thank you all so much for your support throughout the years.